Human resources is a renewable national growth and a key component in the development of societies at the intellectual, academic and economic levels. Dr. Ibrahim Al-Kindi, the CEO of a Mal establishment for print publishing and advertising, says this is a crucial time for Oman to make the changes. Dr. Ibrahim Al-Kindi, uh, for the journey on human resources, this is a continuous one and now uh, it's very vital for Oman to look into the human resources. Yes, actually um, we are in a, uh, in a vital need uh, to put uh, a strategy, um, strategy for replacement. Uh, and uh, I think the private sector itself uh, need a lot of uh, concern, more focus on how we deal with this private, which is, uh, uh, I mean, the major who absorbed most of the expatriate. And now there is um, a very, uh, I mean, good time to, to arise this uh, uh, issue because uh, we have to set as a state uh, a strategy for uh, development, our human resource, to develop them, to, uh, I mean, give them a chance to, uh, I mean, uh, to catch the opportunity within the private sector and also we have to increase their abilities in, uh, in a public sector. We see, um, maybe we see our employees as a so uh, I mean social, uh, uh, I mean, in, uh, uh, insurance, but we need them as a productive. Uh, where uh, where are the problem? When is uh, I mean where the is the critical point we have to focus on? Now this conference is to deal with all those issues, and uh, I think um, I mean based on the foundation as uh, stats and numbers, uh, we need uh, to see where uh, I mean to head. Uh, the strategy for 2040 is also need uh, a kind of foundation to depart from. Uh, so I think this, uh, this is the importance of the conference uh, to facilitate the knowledge and the information from, from many good examples around the world, also from the problems within our uh, private sector and public sector in Oman. It's not just strategies, it's a combination that really matters, short term and long term, say the experts who have gathered here. And let's hear from them because it's all about the different theories that have been successful that really matter today at this conference here and that is human resources and preparations for the future. Of course the topic here is uh, human resources, one of the first sessions is on empowerment but of course you are an expert on human resources but there's always a challenge for the employer and the employee, what would you say is a current challenge in the world? The most uh, important challenge is that of change management. To get the employee to understand about the need to change, the need to be empowered. This is, uh, I would like to just say using, I like to use this word, it's about giving them inspiration. Inspiration here is to mean uh, Give him then the sense of purpose. Why are they working? Is it just a livelihood, earning a living because of you, you, because of you, you mean because of you, my family, because of you, whatever you become to, to support you in your life, or is it because of your man, because of you, my organization? So the biggest challenge is to get the employee to understand that there has he, uh, he or she has got to go beyond just merely earning a living. I call it buy-in, in some way with buy-in. Get them to buy at the highest level. It's not the lowest level which is awareness. Yes, I know I'm working here, but so what? The so what, give them the so what? The so what is you have got to add value. You are part of the asset, you're part of whatever. You are not a liability, you're making a positive difference. That requires intervention. So that is in the, uh, the aspect of the employee. The employer should be the one who takes the responsibility to do this. It doesn't happen by accident. If you hope that empowerment, improvement in human cap capital happen by accident without strategic intervention, you're wrong. There must be strategic intervention. And what does it mean of strategy here? Do something at the right time, the right place with the right people. Do something with a plan. The plan is not short term. The plan has got to be long term. There are a lot of short termism among the leaders. 
Short term busy, day to day running. You do not empower your staff from day to day running, which I call it problem solving. Problem solving, you don't grow by solving the problem. You maintain status quo. If you want to go up, it is more than problem solving, please. It's, it is what we call coming up with ideas how to do it. Empowering to me is give them the six E's. Six E's, give, them, give your people the six E's. Number one is the expertise. No, the one E. The second E is the experience. The third E is the energy. Energize them. The third, fourth E is excitement. Excite them about work. And the, the fifth one is I call it empathy. Give them the feeling of caring for Oman, caring for the other people, caring for the customer. And the last one, which is also very important in being ethical E. If you got this E, which is expertise, experience, energy, excitement, empathy, and ethics, he or she will be empowered. That's what we call empowerment. And that's a look at the six ways of empowerment. Now, another theory that we've come across, success and survival are the two sides of the same coin. Dr. Zegar Van Der Well is just not a person who's having a professional uh, experience and being a speaker, but also he's a researcher in the areas of organizational values and culture, integrity management, performance management, and job motivation. And here he's going to be talking about best practices for human capital development. That's Tell correct. us more. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm originally from the Netherlands. I moved to Singapore about three years ago and I think one of the reasons for moving to Singapore is that they place such a big emphasis on um, training, human development, um, measuring performance and also rewarding performance. So the Singapore success story I think is, uh, is widely known uh, around the world um, because they, they really emphasize developing human capital uh, but also assessing, uh, continuously assessing and evaluating the performance of public sector employees. Um, and is this what best practice is all about? I think so. Um, I think what they've done is uh, try different models, also look very closely at the private sector, uh, but, but also measure the effectiveness of particular models. And if they don't work, set them aside and try something else. So, so they don't stick with things that do not work well um, and I think adapting different best practices from across the world without being um, ideological about anything, being very pragmatic about what works and what hurts is part of their success story. So they're not attached to a certain theory because we evolve all the time and society does and so does human resources I suppose. No, absolutely and uh, I think for, for a country such as Singapore uh, perhaps Oman is, is a slightly different country, of course, with, with different resources, etc. But, but they always say that survival and success are two sides of the same coin, right? And people are very crucial there because uh, there's no natural resources. Now here in Oman, of course, there is natural resources. Uh, it's, it's one of the gifts, I guess, of the country. Uh, but, but then, of course, as, as, as the Omani government is very well aware of, natural resources run out at some stage. Uh, and you better develop your human resources to be ready for the, the challenges of the future. The four-day event will have two days of conference as well as two days of workshop activities. Lakshmi Kothnet reporting for omanobserver.com.